Hello, welcome to Writing Your Thesis, What You Should Know. Seriously, this will save you weeks of work. This is video four of a five-part series. We've talked about video one, background and general tips. We've talked about headings and templates, frames and hyperlinking, and this is video four. Zotero is a hero. So make sure you're listening in the back because this is the greatest referencing software that you'll ever find. Zotero is an online referencing software. It's free. You heard that right. And it's open source, so it keeps getting better. So think EndNote, think Reference Manager, only free and easier to access. You'll need to download off of their website the program and the Word add-on. We're going to go through that in this video. The benefits of Zotero. So I started out using EndNote for my thesis, and I found that Actually, it wasn't acceptable to use. So I, I had my data on a USB stick. I had the library. If I didn't have my data with me, the library with me, I couldn't use it. Sometimes the USB would work in one computer and not another. So I was stuck with no way to add to my EndNote library to reference this document until I found Zotero. So Zotero is completely online. The database is synced online. So this means as long as you have access to the internet, you have access to your library. A great thing that you can also do with Zotero is access simultaneously from multiple computers. So say you're doing a report and it's due tomorrow and there are six of you and it has to be referenced. Instead of one person going through everything, each of you can split up, you can use the Zotero database, and you can all reference your project at the same time. So this is very, very user-friendly, very intuitive. I highly recommend getting this if you want an easy, an easy thesis writing experience. Easier. It's, it's a gray area. How it works is you download styles from the Zotero style repository. Like I said, it's open access. So if you don't find the style that you need, which is often the case with some of the more um, specialized journals, you can create your own. I have created my own. Uh, journal style in the past, and it's really surprisingly easy. Like I say, the forums are very, very intuitive. They're very helpful. I was offered help, any help that I need to write my style, and I think now it's up on the website. It's very easy and user-friendly. Recently, they've got a duplicate file finder, which we'll go over when we go over the program. You can use Amazon to, to highlight books. So one of the things that I couldn't do with EndNote or Reference Manager is to actually find books. So say, say you want to reference a textbook or something like that, there wasn't an option with anything else, but with Zotero you can. Also you can insert PDFs, kind of like the papers, papers option, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Insert references into text, you can copy and paste them because they're hyperlinked. And insert bibliography. So these are the things we're going to discuss in our lesson on Zotero. So first thing we're going to do is open a Firefox window. Now Zotero was originally made for Firefox. Oh, there, okay. They've now expanded that to include a standalone add-on, so you can use it in Google Chrome or Safari. But we'll talk about it a little bit. So Zotero is a free, easy-to-use tool. It's at www.zotero.org. Grab your research with a single click, so I'll show you how to use it. It shows the files up here in the browser window. Store anything, including PDFs, and, and you know you can take snapshots of websites. You can store anything you need. Okay, so how to use it? What you want to do? Download now on the home page, and you've got your Zotero for Firefox, which is initially the the application that it was created for, and you've got the standalone version that you can run with Chrome or Safari. So what you do is click on your Zotero for Firefox. And you also need to add the plugin for Word. So if you click on here, depending on what you're using, just install the Word for Windows plugin or Mac or whatever you're, you're using. So going back to the home page. So once it's installed, um, you can pause this video if you need to. We're not going to install it on this computer because it's already here and we don't have that much time. Once it's installed, you'll see a nice little Z on the bottom for Zotero. So we click on it and the application will load. So here's all of my library, my imported, etc., all of the, the items in my view. 
when you click on your Word, once you've installed the Word add-in, and you go under add-in, so we'll pretend we are at the home page, click on add-in, and custom toolbars, this is your Zotero toolbar. This means insert a citation. This is if you want to edit your citation that you've already inserted. This is insert bibliography, edit your bibliography. This will refresh all of your Zotero fields, so if you're doing, for example, a numbered, um, a numbered reference list and you have to delete something, it will renumber everything and reorganize. This button is set document preferences. So if you want to click on a journal style, you know, a Jane Neuroscience, Elsevier Harvard, etc., etc. Okay. And this button will remove all codes. So you actually want to avoid that button. And I think that they should probably move it away because you don't want to click on that accidentally. It's kind of the format button. So these are all of your things. If you want to, for example, insert a citation into your thing. Words, words, words. Uh, our images are gone. That's okay. Insert a citation. We want rough at all because, hey, why not do a self plug right there? Oh, I don't know what it did. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, click format citation. And there we go. The find. None of those are me. Oh, here's one. They're cell based transplantation strategies. That's nice. And so we'll insert it into our Word document. And we see right here it's inserted. So if I want to generate a bibliography at the end, doo -doo -doo -doo, I've generated my table of contents. Bibliography. Um, that's going to be heading style one. And I'm going to insert my bibliography. So add in, insert bibliography. There we go. So it's very easy to format. You can refresh it if you have more than one and you change their order. You can click on refresh and it will it will refresh all of your Zotero. So what is this and how does it work? So we've clicked on our little V on the bottom and here's all of my personal library. How do you get a library, you say? So you can go to PubMed. And if you click in, I, I typed science earlier because that's what I love. And if you click there, a list will come up of 25 or 125,000 things. You'll see in the search bar, that, however, a nice little folder that wasn't there before. So if I click on, I'm left clicking on Save to Zotero, you can select which item you want to save to your library. So you can select all, or you can select none, or you can select one or two. You can scroll down to the next page. There's lots of them. I'm going to deselect all. We'll pretend that we selected them. And that's how they go into this library. Alternatively, if there's a single paper that you want, you can search for it. Say I wanted this one. Now watch what happens up here. It'll generate a paper reference. So this paper shows up when there's a single reference. The file folder shows up when there's multiple references. Alternatively, you can use this really cool thing. So say you want a textbook. So that you're referencing something you read in a textbook. Let's do brain textbook. And I don't know if they can do it yet, but as of when I wrote my thesis, EndNote and Reference Manager could not do this. And anything from a book had to be manually put in. Now you can use Amazon. So say I'm gonna so same thing, our folder showed up. All sorts of textbooks. A really cool thing, cancel. Um, a really cool thing is you click on it. And each individual book can be saved with this blue little this blue icon. You can also save, let's see if we can get a PDF. Free PDF. Full text available. Sort. You can download PDFs to it, which is really cool. Uh, free tag. Where's my PDF? Full text PDF. And, okay, well, let's just say whatever. You can copy and paste it in, or you can save a PDF onto your file, and that's, that's or onto your Zotero library, and that's acceptable too. All right, so we've looked at the three kind of types of, of getting data into. Now, what can I do with my Zotero library? 
So the thing that I like the most is this online access. So number one, let's do duplicate file finding. If you select a whole bunch of things, you put them in, duplicate items. So your Zotero will automatically detect duplicate items. And if you click on them, select items to merge, sometimes it sinks a little. And you can just move, merge two items or choose the version to use as the master item. It'll just let you merge everything. And it'll merge the two into one. It's really great at detecting that. So we don't need to do all of this now. We'll do one more just because get that out of the way. So you can merge your duplicate items. You need to sign up. I think you need to log in on the website. Let me just double check. Here. On the website, you can log in. And then log into Zotero. And so I'm I'm set up. You you need to start out by having your username and password. And then what you can do is set your options to where is it? RTF scan is cool. I've never been able to get it to work, but um, theoretically what RTF scan is, if you type things into a notepad document, or if you save your Word document as just a DOC, and if you put references in brackets, it'll automatically scan and find the references, but I've personally not been able to get it to work. It sounds cool, um, but when you're writing your thesis, you don't have a lot of time for fiddling around with things. If you can, that's great. If not, I'll show you how I did it. Preferences, I believe, under options. I think. Tag them. Sync. Here we go. That's what we want. So you want to sync your library to the central Zotero server so that it saves it. So under the preferences option, under sync, you want to put in your username and password and click sync automatically. Sync using Zotero, download files at sync time, sync attachments, etc. And by clicking on this, you can save all of your items to the external Zotero server. So heaven forbid if there's a fire or your computer crashes, like it will, your computer will crash several times, all your data is backed up online in an external site, you can just access it. You can just re-download it. It takes 10 minutes, 20 minutes if you have an extensive library, and it's easy. So yeah, like this is this is they say it's free. So I mean as students it's it's just your price. I really recommend it. Easy to download, easy to manipulate and work with, and you can use it simultaneously. It's linked online. You don't have to worry about it. Um yeah, so number four is or Zotero is a hero. Next in our video series we're gonna talk about GraphPad Prism and why it is the best. So, so tune in. See you soon.